say that. If you really say God loves us, then why are there so many rules? You, know, you can't do this, can't do this, can't do this. You know, if there's love, it should be unconditional. Actually, the very idea, some people have, some people have the love, idea of this free love. Actually, free love, it's, it's an impossibility. Because love itself is a bond. Love is a bond means when we enter into a loving relationship that connects us with the other person. But when it connects us with the other person, that it also limits us in some ways. Okay, If I am in a relationship with this person, that means there are certain things I can't do. Mm -hmm. The way an unmarried person can act, a married person cannot act like that. The way parents with children can act, a couple with children can act. That couple without a couple with, with children, they cannot act entirely in the same way as a couple without children. But if you want the relationship, there is a price. So love itself is a bond. However, this is a bond, especially when there is love for Krishna. This is a bond that liberates us. This is not, it is not a bond that restricts us. So there is no way. A love can be there without any kind of bonds in it. Now, suppose somebody says that, you know, a parent says, I love my child fully. I love my child unconditionally. Therefore, I let my child go in the go and play ball in the middle of a crowded road. And the government will serve and say, whether you love your child or not, you are not fit to be a parent. Maybe you need a parent. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> Is it? <laughs> love means there has to be some bonds. And bonds mean there are some limitations. So now when, when since Krishna accepts everyone, but there are activities which he approves and there are activities which he doesn't approve. And the activities which he approves are the activities which bring us closer to Him, which will help us raise our consciousness. So, Krishna not approving certain activities is also a sign of His love. Now, if we go deeper, the activities that Krishna does not approve, they are the activities which actually pull us down, which drag our consciousness downwards, which, ex which impede us in experiencing life in its fullness and richness. Because our consciousness becomes shrunk by such say, sensual indulgences and mundane activities. So Krishna, he accepts everyone. Accepts, but that doesn't mean he approves of everything that everyone does. So that's a difference. And that brings me to the last point. What's the acronym once again? So what S is remaining now. So S is, now when we use the word condition, the word condition can refer to terms or it can refer to state. Like suppose somebody says that conditions apply. That means, okay, we have a warranty of six years for this product, but conditions apply. That means these are terms, terms, terms. But uh, the word condition can also mean state. That means, okay, how is the condition of the patient? That doesn't mean what are the terms. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> what we are referring to is what is the state of the patient. So Krishna's love is conditional in the sense of state, not terms. What does this mean? That even if Krishna loves us, if our consciousness is not in a receptive state, we will not be able to perceive Krishna's love. So the example is of the sun. The sun gives light to everyone. In that sense, the sun is unconditional in giving light. Whether you are virtuous or vicious, whether you are wise or foolish, the sun gives light to everyone. But at the same time, if somebody is in a state of closed eyes, if somebody's eyes are closed, they will not be able to perceive the sun's light. And that is not a fault of the sun. So to the sun is giving light unconditionally, but to perceive the sun's light, the person has to be in a particular condition. And that is with the eyes open. 
So similarly, Krishna loves everyone. But to perceive Krishna's love, our heart has to be in a particular condition. Our heart has to be open to receive Krishna's love. So, for us the state is the state of our heart. If our, if our state of, if our heart is locked or it is open. You consider a house can be locked or it can be open. So locked, when it is locked means it is locked by our attachments. So, if it is locked by our attachments, then we won't be able to perceive Krishna's love. So for example, parents may be doing a lot for their children. But if the child is infatuated with a particular toy, and the parents say, I want this toy. And the parents say, well, not now. Then children are also quite good at emotional blackmail. You know, say, now we may not want to use the word blackmail with a the child. They may not know what is what is a blackmail. But they may manipulate. No, you don't love me. Hmm? Well, there are hundred things that the parents are doing to love the child, to express their love for the child. But the child reduces the love of the parent to that one particular toy. So similarly, what happens is our attachments, they reduce our vision to one particular object. And if Krishna gives us that, then Krishna loves us. If Krishna doesn't give us that, then where is Krishna even there? So if our heart is locked by our attachments, then it is difficult for us to perceive Krishna's love. That's why in the Bhagavad Gita 244 it is said, Bhogaishwari Prasaktana Taya Apaharita Chetasam. So our consciousness is captivated, it is, it is abducted, it is kidnapped by attachment to wealth and opulent enjoyment. Taya Apaharita Chetasam. And then what happens is, Yavasayatmika Buddhi Samadhau Navidhiyate. So that steady intelligence will not come. Oh, my desire is fulfilled. Oh, Krishna loves me. My desire is not fulfilled. Does Krishna even exist? Mm -hmm. 